What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Rad 89 here bringing you another video and it's a good day, awesome day. We have a new David Cronenberg film out. I know I'm a little late on this one, but I finally got a chance to catch Crimes of the Future. If you don't know David Cronenberg, he's a popular body horror film person. He's done, he did The Fly with Jeff Goldblum. He did Shivers, which is one of my favorites from back in the day. Scanners is another great one. So he's known for doing very original, crazy body horror concepts and this is no different. It's a definitely an original concept. And today we're gonna to talk about the positives, my negatives, the rating, and then I'm gonna send you all home. Let's do this. Roll it. So Crimes of the Future is David Cronenberg's new film. And as I said in my intro, this is a very original concept as it takes place in a far distant future where Human bodies have different symptoms and different evolutionary things that are going on to adapt to the world around us, which is a very mechanical and synthetic world. So humans are adapting to survive. They even have a, an, like a accelerated evolutionary syndrome, which is people who can literally like grow more organs inside their body. That's actually what Viggo Mortensen, our main character that we follow the most of the time, he has that syndrome. So yes, this is a very wild and crazy concept of a film. So let's get into the positives right away. And one major positive is that David Cronenberg always brings originality. This is something unlike anything you've ever seen before. And that's what's great is when you go to a Cronenberg film, you're always going to get something new, something very original and something that's intriguing that you have to digest. You know what I mean? So that's what's awesome. You know, in a world where we're getting a lot of cookie cutter, cliche same type movies over and over or tv shows that just wash rinse repeat it's amazing to see a very original concept come to life and put on screen the performances i think are great too we have vigo mortensen in here as our lead role we also have leah sado in here and kirsten stewart and i think everybody performance wise i think they all do a great job like in terms of that they really have this nature about them and this way about them vigo mortensen's character is probably the most prominent most the character we get to know the best and he's got this way about him the way he talks and it's very soft and the way he walks around in like this cloak hooded outfit the whole time and he has this very kind of polite nature about him but it's very soft kind of taken back but it's a presence you can feel him in the scene and in the rooms he's in so i thought that was really cool like i said performances I think they all do a very good job across the board. Also, our music and sound design is amazing. All those things assist in building the world and making it very like this own unique kind of, it has a lot of synth noises, techno, and like kind of, you know, those avant-garde noises going on. And I like that aspect of the film, especially when we're dealing with the uh, surgery scenes because Viggo Mortensen and Leah Sado, they are performance artists who use Viggo's body to do surgery, but they perform it and do it as art and they like dissect him and take body parts out of him and stuff like that because he's able like i said has that accelerated evolutionary syndrome so yeah that that is a wild stuff so all the sounds all the noises all the music going on i think that was all done very well for sure and when you go to a cronenberg film you know you're going to be getting realistic practical effects and i like it there is some cgi in here but all the realistic practical effects and the design of like the machinery and like the kind of the breakfast eating chair, like they all have these intricate kind of like really cool designs about them, like all the rooms, like I said, everything. It has this way about it. It really does the film. So I like that. When you go to a Cronenberg film, you're always going to get those real cool, creative, practical effects in your movie. One thing, though, I must warn you about this film is this is a... Uh, the concept that Cronenberg goes with is this is a highly sexualized type film. And for me, that's never really a big problem, but I know for some people that can be a problem. But for me, horror and sex are like the two sides of the same coin. They go hand in hand. So this film, I think it's okay what he chose to do with the concept, but then there's some stuff that happens in the third act where I could understand why people might have a problem with it because you're setting up surgery as the new sex in this movie. And there's a certain scene, certain stuff that happens in that third act that I know some people are going to be uncomfortable with, even though it's, you know, just practical like facts, effects and stuff like that and everything. But just the way the con the context of the story and how it goes down. But it, it didn't bother me that much. But yeah, I must warn you just in case. 
But now let's talk about the mixed and negatives because there are a, a few problems I had with this film. Like, oh, like I mixed negatives. Let's go right off the bat. Let's just get into it because this is a very weird, confusing movie. Like I said, it's unlike anything you've ever seen before. And one thing I can say that's a mixed and negative is I feel like there's stuff missing in this film, either that was left on the cutting room floor or intentionally left out by Cronenberg. And I wanted more world building. We get the characters in the world. We get a lot of these cool effects, sound design, and like stuff going on. And we kind of know where the characters are going and their motives, but we don't really get any world building stuff around them. I really wanted to learn more about the time we're in and what has happened, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I think this film actually could have been, usually I'm typically saying like some films are too long and they need to be shortened up. I actually think this film was a little too short and this film could have been 10 or 15 minutes longer and we could have had some more stuff in it. And like I said, I wanted more world building, a little bit maybe more exposition. Like I know that might seem like, oh, I'm, I'm dumb. I'm a, like a stupid audience member, I can't understand. But I think this film needed a little bit of exposition in it just to kind of set up where we're at and what has happened in the world and stuff. A lot of it, you have to kind of just pick up the pieces as the film's going on. Another thing I wanna say is probably, like I said, a mixed or negative is this is definitely one of those films that I think requires a second watch. I watched it twice and I did enjoy it a lot more on the second watch, but on that first watch, there were still some elements, like I said, that were left out, especially when we get to our ending third act scene. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but when we get to our third act and where it ends off, I just felt like there was stuff left out. I felt like kind of cheated a little bit. So I had to watch it a second time and it definitely does better on a second watch. So I feel like this is easily a movie that requires multiple watches to really feel the concept, to understand what's happening. Even the dialogue on the second time around, I thought the dialogue was a lot better. So overall, like, but this, like, it's still a fun movie. Like I still enjoyed it. It's not like I said, I would say a fun movie, but I still enjoyed it because I'm a fan of body horror. I like Cronenberg and all his past movies a lot. And I like even his son, Brandon Cronenberg, does some awesome stuff like Possessor. If you haven't seen that, highly recommend checking that out. But Crimes of the Future was one that, yeah, I did feel a little bit cheated on just by the ending spot where it leaves us hanging. And I wanted some more world building just to make it more epic. And uh, maybe it was my fault because I went into this film with kind of high expectations. So that might have been a little bit my fault. But overall, in my book, Crimes of the Future is going to get a 7 out of 10. This is still a film that I would recommend checking out and, you know, rent it, watch it. But it's one of those films that I think definitely requires two watches to really feel the effect and feel the concept and understand what's happening. But I like the performances, the body horror, the music, sound design, all top notch. And Cronenberg for bringing a very original concept. I love that. You know, he always does that and knocks it right out of the park when it comes to the concepts. So thanks for sticking around with me all for this review of Crimes of the Future. If you've seen the film, let me know in the comments section what you thought of this movie. I would love to hear from all of you. And don't forget to like and subscribe, subscribe so you get more videos like this. And have a safe and happy day, everyone. Peace out.